All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. So tonight I've got a pretty awesome show, a few pretty awesome people on here as well. So I've got Scott from the Scotch Test Dummies. Go ahead, Scott. Say hey. Scott here. Uh, Bart is absent. Bart is absent. <laughs> that is a very true statement. Okay. So, <laughs> and I've also got Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night. Hello. Hi. How is everybody? Hey. So um, tonight we've got a pretty cool show. So we ended up getting these um, free samples essentially from, from Brian and Tani, uh, Tammy Brennicky when we were out in Austin and there are four different store picks. So we thought it would be fun since all three of us ended up getting these same samples. Although one of us may or may not have drank one and a half of them already. Drink <laughs> <laughs> uh... more bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> so we thought that it would be fun to come on here and, and, and drink together, so. Um, it's been what two weeks since we've drank together. So, yeah. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're just missing each other. Yes, absolutely. Been too long. <laughs> so here we go. So Scott, I'm going to give you the honors here. Um, what do you think we should go for first? We, well, actually, why don't, why don't, uh, you rattle off the four that we've got. Okay. So these are store picks are all from, uh, I think local stores to where, uh, Brian and Tammy are at. They're in Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana, but we've got a, uh, Knob Creek. Uh, store pick, um, Russell's Reserve, a Maker's Private Select, and a Four Roses OESQ recipe. Awesome. So what do you think we should start with? I would think my preference would lie, let's go with the Weeder first and go with the Maker's Private Select probably first. That sounds good to me. What do you guys think? I think that sounds good. Yeah, I like your logic. Right, well, you guys have that one. Awesome. It should be it should be a little bit lighter on the palate, and then let the rye of the others kick in. Sounds good. Sounds good. So it's a hundred and eleven point seven proof. <laughs> so, uh, a good way to start. <laughs> yeah, lighter. He says. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so these are uh, these are pretty heavy pours. So I'm not I'm not judging anybody if they don't if they don't drink their whole sample here. <laughs> oh, you just went for it. <laughs> we are. I like that. Oh yeah, no, I don't mess around. See the, the well, way I look I'm at like it. Point, I'm also I am not responsible for, responsible for if Bart gets any of this or not. Um, oh no, no, absolutely not. He missed the boat. You lose, you lose. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Um. So. Before we jump into this, uh, just a quick somber note. So um, Brian and Tammy uh, kind of messaged, we were messaging back and forth and Brian let us know that his father recently passed away over the last weekend. So we thought it would be appropriate to have a toast to Dick Brennicky, uh, Brennicky, yep. Um, and just say, you know, I guess cheers and uh, you will be missed. So cheers. 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 Cheers to you. Well, that mm -hmm. was a good dram. So <laughs> that is pretty. Wow. Tasty. Yeah. Wow. That is very good. It does taste very similar to um, kind of the barrel strength maker's mark with just a little extra goodness mm -hmm. on there. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really feel like it hits though, like a 111. Like it seems it's got like a flavor punch, but it's not, you know, like burning at all. Flavor punch. Flavor punch. <laughs> Flavor <laughs> punch. <laughs> some of my I would never say what you say. Collo colloquialisms? No. <laughs> I, I got to say that I can already picture the t-shirt in my head. I think that would be great. No. <laughs> Flavor punch. <laughs> now, we'll point out I was uh, I had to wet my palate uh, with a little ah. whiskey coming in, and I'm using my It's Bourbon Night. We're all kind of got each other's merchandise here a little bit, but Thanks. my It's Bourbon Night rocks glass. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I had a, yeah. I had a little Weller special reserve in there for my palate. Ooh. Nice. Good thing to put in it. So some of the people that are a little late to the party asking where Bart is tonight. Mm -hmm. He uh, couldn't Bart be just, with us. Well, uh, Bart has a tough time through the week just with, uh, you know, he's got uh, two younger kids mm -hmm. and uh, the youngest has downs. And so he's, they're pretty tasked. He's pretty tasked through the week and sometimes even on the weekends. So. But him getting together special and we got together lat we were actually we we release on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. We were coming up today. We didn't have an episode filmed. We were <laughs> out of episodes. So we had to meet last night to get uh, some film so we could get ahead of the curve there a little bit. So I actually I watched your episode today and I'm having trouble remembering what it was. 
Yeah, that was one we just shot last night. The sh from Sugarland Distillery. Sugarland, that's right. Roaming, yeah. Roaming Man Rye. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, you guys made that sound so good. Um, it was really surprising. It really surprised me. Very it's good. It's a unique one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so like the color is so dark and it's so flavorful for the age. You're right. Yeah. Um, I think we had edition four, release four. The yeah, I think there's been one since the one we yeah. have. Yeah, we had, we had uh, five, and they're five. just getting ready yeah. to come out. They're just getting ready to push out six. Six. Yeah. 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 Great, the, great bottle and label though. Yes, the packaging is beautiful. Yeah. But now, how? I mean, do they do it all? Do you guys know? Is everything just pre-order basically with them and on the website? And it looked they, like it was like batch six was already even sold out. It looked. They like. pretty yeah. much have said. It's the, sold out. The, the yeah, I mean they have pre-sales, but I don't think they ever get to regular sales because <laughs> it's all pre-sales sold out. Yeah, which is a good problem to have. That's yeah. why it's time they to expand. Seven fives. That's neat. Yeah, it's tough to keep that same quality though. I've seen so many distilleries kind of go down that route, especially dealing with so many of these craft craft ones. It's like. You know, um, what was it? Just last night I was doing Cedar Ridge. Um, so I filmed, I went to film one episode last night. I ended up filming three. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it was a, it was a very productive night, but two of the bottles were from Cedar Ridge. And when I was looking at it, the, the Iowa bourbon, it's like Iowa. Yeah. It's just Iowa bourbon. Um, it was 40%, but I guess it used to be like 48% and then they've lowered it. And you know, when you taste it, you can kind of tell, you know, it's, it's, it feels like it should be a little higher proof, but demand you know mm -hmm. they don't have enough to go around for sure well you know speaking of makers which we're drinking they try to pull that same thing and uh the fans wouldn't have it that's true i remember that they drop it from 90. how long ago was that oh it was a couple of years yeah two or three years ago they did it yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think that you know, was still though Maker's Mark and Wellers to me they're both I, I just I've got them on my shelf over here I go to them both all the time I like them for a standard mm -hmm. you know kind of an average I mean a a lower priced bourbon you can walk into any liquor store well at least in our area I know some areas Wellers is hard to find mm -hmm. but here I mean you can go into any any store you can find Wellers uh, under twenty dollars Maker's Mark is twenty four dollars Elijah wow. Craig small batch is twenty four dollars. Mm -hmm. And they're three bourbons that are, you know, they're all under $25. And to me, I think they're, it's just a good, good everyday bourbons. Mm -hmm. we, we would put larceny in the mix. Oh, I would throw, yeah. For, yeah. For a weed or two. I mean, we prefer larceny over the regular makers. Now the 46 and the cast strength, you know, that's a different ballpark, but you know, when you're in that 22 to $25 range, um, I think we both would pick larceny over the regular makers. It's just a little, quirk of ours <laughs> that, yeah. that we have well i grew up in a maker's loving family and i was always there and i always found it even when i didn't like bourbon i always found it just a little bit too sweet for me mm -hmm. um as i find most things i'm like just give me the stronger and higher proof <laughs> and more like intense char flavors but um it's because she's not sweet i'm not i'm ar well no i'm already <laughs> sweet enough oh that's okay. so i don't need but yeah, I, I always found makers to be a little bit too sweet, but I do love the cast strength and the private selects. So yeah, I gotta say, this is fantastic. It's uh, really you know. good. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about it. It's no. really good. I'm pretty excited if they all end up uh, being along these same lines in quality. Well, I won't spoil it for you, but I have cracked all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just did this without you too. I think I just decided that I was gonna do it and I just opened them without chat oh, knowing. And then I was like, well. do you want to try this? I'd, I'd like to say we, you know, we didn't make plans originally. Of course, we were all in Austin. It's not like we said, "Hey, let's do a live show all together with these samples." Yeah. Right. And and uh, Bill and I were just uh, who we did a live stream. We came in. Who who was we with the other night, Bill? You and me. Yeah. Oh oh, with like everybody. Yeah. Um. That that was funny. We all jumped in. It was after I did and, Malton Montreal's show. Yeah. And, and then, then afterwards, me and you were talking and we had the samples. And so we were like, well, let's do a live show. And then that was when you emailed Chad and Sarah. So, I mean, it's not like we had planned to do them. And then they br and then you guys broke into them and drank them beforehand. Right. I was going to say, I probably uh, emailed them at like 1130 at night. Be like, you guys have those samples, right? We got to do a show. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And at that point, I was like, uh, well, I do have those samples. Mostly. But one of them's gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm glad that you did, though, because I think that's a great idea. We didn't, until you emailed, I didn't know that you all also got those samples, which mm -hmm. is so generous of them to, like, package those for all of us and bring them for us to share. Yeah, I think totally. that's really sweet. I don't know if you can see my dog like climbing onto the table <laughs> to hang out with Chad. What's She's the dog's name? <laughs> wow. She wants to be a star, you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, she's a dog on the internet. She could probably do pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's the dog's name? Her name's Zoe. Zoe. <laughs> She's really having a ball right now. <laughs> what does Chad have in his my beard? beard? That's a flavor saver. <laughs> go, go lay down. <laughs> Plot, plot. <laughs> Lay down. Oh man! All right. So, um, as much as I want to continue drinking this, why don't we move on to the next guy? Maybe put this one aside. Okay. Um, as long as I don't certainly don't want to interrupt anybody's drink here, but we've got a lot to do. We've got some very hard work ahead of us. So, don't don't <laughs> rush a good thing, Bill. I know. I. I yeah, all right, maybe a couple more sips. <laughs> you guys also have a lot more left in your bottles than we do. So well, I was just gonna say this is uh, well, I might only pour half of the next ones because I, I almost like I'm gonna have to drink this. I'm gonna have to. I almost every time I finish filming anything, there's a couch right back there. Actually, you can see part of it over there. There. <laughs> Backwards is hard. Um, couch over there that I usually go sit on and just kind of chill and drink whatever's left from whatever I filmed. And uh, just kind of watch whatever on TV. It's a good way to end the night, usually. That's so. a nice way to end the night. Well, that sounds like your next series. <laughs> Sitting on the couch drinking whiskey. Is, yeah. What you've been watching. Yeah. Like, <laughs> a couple episodes, you take two or three of them, make mm -hmm. a little suicide, a little small batch of your own, sit on the couch, and postulate about uh, what's on TV. I don't know. I kind of just want to see, like, jump cuts between what he's pouring and his reactions to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Just I recently one, uh, watched one single tear. Yeah, <laughs> I actually recently watched Deadpool for the first time. Oh, yeah, fantastic movie. The uh, first one. The first one. Yeah, I haven't oh, seen the second so one good. yet. So I'm I'm going through the whole Marvel universe, including the TV shows. So I'm in. Uh, I'm about to start Daredevil Part Two. Um, nice. But then I looked it up, and people were like, "Yeah, there's nowhere in particular that Daredevil goes." And I'm like, "Well, hell, I want to watch that." So I went and watched it. And uh, yeah, that was a fantastic movie. But I really think that Deadpool changed the landscape for Marvel movies as far as like what you can do and what you can't do. Well, it's technically not a Marvel movie, but it's the whole Fox thing. It's a yeah. universe, but then they bought Fox, so, but it's yeah. universe. Yeah. yeah. Well, basically after that, it opened the door for movies like Logan. Right. Oh man. Great movie too. Which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people in the, in the chat, have you guys seen Logan? That's an awesome movie. Scott, have you seen Logan? Yeah, yeah, I love all the uh, X Men movies, all the Marvel movies that have come out. I love, I love how much the. Uh, it really surprised me when you look at Infinity War. How I mean, how many people they pulled in to right. to make that this uh, the two movie series here that's coming up, but and they're still adding people. I mean, Captain Marvel's coming up. You know, they're going to be adding into it as well, but. I'm psyched so, about that too. Now, one one thing that sucks though is because I've made this commitment to going through all the all of these things, uh, it's really hard to avoid any sort of spoilers on all of these new Marvel movies that come out. <laughs> um, that's been tough. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't speak for Chad, but I look at those movies and I just think, oh my god, the casting budget, the, the yeah, schedule right, yeah. coordination. <laughs> like that's where my brain goes to is like, how did they coordinate all of the their logistics. schedules? Yeah, the logistics. That's so what my brain goes to. What a nerd. I know. Brian, I can't just enjoy the movie. <laughs> Brian's commenting on uh about Logan saying the little girl was awesome. I totally agree. Like she she killed her role. Like I thought she did a great job with that role. Yeah, she killed it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she killed pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting the glove. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chad, is Chad and Sarah picking the next one then? Yes, um, I think so. Yes, I think that we should go with the Russells. Russells. Awesome. Yeah. I was actually kind of hoping you were going to pick that one. Oh, <laughs> I read your mind. Yeah. <laughs> 
I actually haven't reviewed any Russells. Uh, I've done some wild turkey, but haven't done Russells yet. Really? Yeah, I know. It's it's tough because like I, I know you guys kind of stick with bourbon. Obviously, Scott mm -hmm. and Bart, I mean, you guys do kind of everything, but you obviously lean a little bit more towards scotch. I go everywhere. So it's it's like yeah. I get a lot of people saying, you really haven't reviewed that? It's like, no, I've got like a thousand things to get to. I'm also right. only, I think I'm only on review like 76, 77, somewhere in there. It's it's. I've yeah. done a lot of like the the informational kind of videos as well. I think I'm at like 140, 150 videos, but only like 75 nice. reviews. So, yeah. congrats on that. Yeah, cheers. To you. <laughs> Appreciate that. You, um, uh, either way, so I certainly haven't tried anything. I would actually say, like, of of most of the whiskey reviewers, I've probably had the least amount of whiskey. But I, um, when I review something, I, I always joke that I know every single thing about there is to know about the thing I'm reviewing that week, <laughs> and then the next week I forget it all. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely do your homework. Uh, I do want to call out a comment from Benji three thousand and eight, who says that DC is better. Batman, Batman beats all. I do oh, like man. Batman. I like some of the individual stuff they've done, but when they combined them all for their uh, their Avengers knockoff, it. I mean, it was not good. I mean, oh, the Suicide Squad there, or no, no not the the Justice League, League, right? Justice yeah, the Justice League. League. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but no, Ben and, Affleck is not a good Batman. Oh, yeah. I like I like Ben Affleck as well. Oh, good, good. I feel like Batman versus Superman came down to wait. Your mom's name's Martha. My mom's <laughs> name's Martha. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yup. Oh, spoilers! <laughs> spoilers. Oh, if they haven't seen it by now, it's been like two years. If you haven't yeah. seen it by now, then that's your fault. They just leave going through the Marvel stuff. You may have not seen it. Okay, well, in case you never saw, watched any of the shows or read the comics, both of their moms' names are Martha. <laughs> <laughs> that was a popular name back in the 40s when they were both invented. <laughs> uh, but no, I would just say DC Comics are better than Marvel. Uh, DC Cartoons are better than Marvel. But mm. Marvel cinematic universe and the movies so far are superior way to dc except, except for the, the nolan the verse. nolan movies yeah i mean batman mm -hmm. uh they're the dark knight the dark knight the Rise trilogy there. yeah that was a good that was pretty good dark knight, second one yeah is yeah. they're all great yes but you the shut your mouth the best <laughs> obviously like the empire strikes back yeah well, yeah well yeah I, I like christian bale's character as uh batman yes. he did really good yeah. Very good. Very good. So, so Chad and Sarah, since you guys picked this one, is there any, anything in particular you'd like to uh, toast? Um, to, <laughs> to meeting all of you, <laughs> in you Austin, the spot. <laughs> and finally getting to meet our in online friends in person. Yes. There oh, you yeah. go. Here, here. Cheers. 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 And do you know what I felt so awful about, but I also kind of thought was so funny? So in all the pictures that we took, Bart wasn't there. Like all the pictures that we had on our phones, we were like, where's Bart? And then I remembered that he just like went to bed early every night or he was just <laughs> off doing his own thing, which is funny because in the video that we shot and what we put out, Roy Roy's was nowhere to be found. But yeah. we were with Roy like the entire time along with you guys. Like I feel like we spent so much time with Roy. And then he's nowhere. <laughs> he's like in just the background of one shot. Didn't have a camera video. on he just when like, he was around. Yeah, the camera was just never pointed at him. And I, I messaged him and apologized. I was like, we did not cut you out of this video. We just only had one <laughs> shot with you in it. Like, please forgive us. He you know what I, uh, what I, I not necessarily regret, but what we missed out on was uh, we were in the hall. Then we went out. We did our live stream, and then we set up and we let Roy run his live stream. And I wanted to go up to the dist or the distillery and the uh, the Fang and Feather and shoot some stuff up there. And about the time we were ready to go, the closing ceremonies ro rolled around on us. We never made it up there. I mean, I definitely regret uh, because at some point it was either Bill or Roy that were like, hey, Scott and Bart have their table set up out there. You can just log into your channel, do your stream from the table, and then we'll all just hand off. And I was like, oh, that's super sweet, but we're going to walk around and do our own, like, you know, handheld live stream because we kind of want to, you know, take everyone with us, not thinking that the Wi-Fi was going to be spotty. So we couldn't even go, like, five feet from the building. So yeah. I feel like we really missed out on that. I was like, dang it, why... The 107 degree heat definitely had an effect on my brain because I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what a missed opportunity. 
Well, was it the the opening ceremonies or the closing where um, Daniel and Rex were, were, you know, thanking all of the YouTube channels and they were like, and Scotch Test Dummies, where where are they? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're in the hall drinking bourbon. It, <laughs> drinking it was whiskey. the opening. <laughs> yeah. We were still inside yeah. tasting some samples. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait, where did this glove awesome. come from? You were talking about it and now I'm confused. Oh. It's, I don't, I, I know GoHab started it, but I don't know why. Um, probably like six months ago on one of my streams, we were talking about video games and somebody just mentioned the power glove. And then I think it was GoHabs. And I was like, I have a power glove. So I ran downstairs and put it on. And now it's a thing that they ask for pretty much every stream. <laughs> it's Booker's and Power Glove. Are Isn't now it weird how that stuff works, though? Because we did a fake cowbell one stream, and then they were like, real cowbell. And then the next episode, <laughs> someone had mailed us a cowbell. And that's awesome. I did see that you have a cowbell. It's got a cool yeah. little We, know, we got one, too, that we use. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, I like that. That has like the the thing inside. Yeah. Because we're always like, shh, but be quiet. Yeah, well, I like that. I like we, Chad though. I watch because he's like doing different tunes. He's like taking recommendations. He does, and yes. people yeah. request tunes. They're like, oh, do this song. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw you play um, <laughs> was Africa the other day. <laughs> yeah. like, not even kidding. Because that new version of it that's by Weezer is on the radio. I cannot. We for three weeks it's been. A serious issue in the household of we cannot Ninja get the sex that party song does out of, our head. of it as well, which is pretty good. Yeah, but it's Ninja. not that awful. To have Ninja sex party. party. <laughs> <laughs> so this Russell's Reserve is delicious. Yeah, yeah, oh, back Russell's on track. <laughs> I do say so far though, I like the Makers more than the Russells. Although mm, I think that it has the Makers has more character. Yeah, I would agree. It has more personality. The Russells, I feel like though, is an easy, an easier sipper. Like it's very drinkable like i'm just sipping on it oh, and it's going down very well I know what i was gonna say what were you gonna say if you watch our video towards it's pretty much the end at our meetup at uh nickel city uh we both try the russell's reserve 2002 mm -hmm. for the very first time i don't mm -hmm. know if, you, if you, either you guys had that have not had it no, no and i've been looking it. i've checked all over it apparently no bottles came to wichita kansas dang we yeah. have two bottles in the city that i know of they are at Justin's House of Bourbon and are a hefty sum of money. No. I may or may not be willing to pay for Chad for a Christmas present. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, like I was going to say, I think buying one is out of the question. But if you can find a, a bar with a decent pour, which they, I think, like Nickel like City was $20, 20, 20 or $25. It was a really good price for, like for the a pour. One and a half, two ounce pour, but it's delicious so good <laughs> so good. and if you watch that part of the video you can see brian and tammy who generously donated these samples so that's right yep Dameless speaking of the samples some people plus. who are kind of a little late to the stream they've been asking what we've had so so far we've had the uh, makers mark private select uh it's a hundred and hundred and eleven point seven um and now we're currently in the russell's reserve um this is from rickhouse b f5 and uh it does, actually doesn't have the proof on here so it does not um i don't know i would say probably probably like a hundred like low hundred if i had to guess i don't think it's as strong as the other one no if i had to guess yeah i would say it's around the hundred to hundred and seven mm -hmm. i would say it's a hundred and ten you yeah not a skill i ever thought i would pick up was be like how alcoholic is a beverage i'm drinking but oh, I nailed it the other day. Chad can be really on point sometimes. Like sometimes I'm like, what are you talking about? That's completely wrong. And then sometimes he'll be like, this is a weeded bourbon that's 107 proof and is about eight to 10 years old. And I'm like, what did you just do? <laughs> <laughs> you wizard. I have I in and out of like the Rain Man thing. You do. Numbers, he you he know. can be like, he's got, he's gets these streaks where yeah. he's really on it. Oh, Brian <laughs> says it's 110 proof. So ah, I was okay. gonna say it's actually Brian and Tammy were hogging the camera. Brian and Tammy were hogging the camera because they make our video as well. Oh, <laughs> yep, there you go. I saw that. So yeah, my, the uh, part that they made in our video, I actually shot, which is a rare occurrence. I usually my footage usually doesn't make the cut. So <laughs> no, I tried. My, uh, I tried. I've been trying to get really a lot better. So most of my video was out of focus, so I don't think we'll be seeing much. <laughs> <laughs> I um man, just my setup was like I, I told you guys this at the at the thing, but I'm just jealous of like everybody else's setup. I just need some better equipment. I mean, Chad, Chad's beyond where I'm gonna get to, but like like uh 
Scott, I am actually, I love your camcorder. I kind of really want that with the Bluetooth for the microphone and everything. Like I bought that really nice microphone, but I'm still wired into something. I'd so much rather not be. Well, and I need to learn. Um, I know Chad and Sarah are using theirs um, or his uh, DSLR for your live streams. I need to learn how to do that because your guys' quality is really good. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that helps. Don't mind the, this is, this is where Chad goes normally. Uh, <laughs> He's getting something. I'm not sure what he's doing. Sarah, did you already drink him oh. under the table? <laughs> he's asleep on the floor. No, uh, he appreciates the compliment. Uh, he does just, He does a, a really good job. What's that? Uh, uh, nice. Dude, if you want to go down this route, I will win. <laughs> <laughs> We're just bringing out video game things. Who's up for some Okay, dumb? wait a second, though. Does anybody have? <laughs> 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 no. No. Is that what you use when you don't like a bottle? <laughs> no, actually, I have uh, I have some nieces and nephews that come over that are little, and I had to hide it from them. <laughs> because like way all I would it. hear for like eight hours straight was the fart gun going. But you should use that for bottles that you're not that into. <laughs> Is that too insulting? I would do it. <laughs> Shout out to like, barrels. Shout out to Barrel Strength Gentleman who just came into the stream as you were using that horn. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of live stream is this? <laughs> There's a zapper, a power glove, and a fart horn. <laughs> what is happening? What is going on? It's only Wednesday. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, I'll say a point. I'll give one extra point to the Maker's Mark. Of course, I'm a Maker's Mark guy, but this one, the Rye stood out right right at the first when I first nosed it and took it, took a sip. And it was like a really dusty barn hay type smell. It, even on the palate came through with it on the Russell's Reserve. So you're saying that would give you a plus, uh, an extra point to the makers for that? Or did you just miss No, I, I'm giving an extra. I just, I like the makers. I'd give it one oh, point higher than it. this one. Both good. I just got some okay. nice dill pickle too on the Russell's. Nice. I, um, so people in the stream don't know this so i went to a brooklotti tasting like right before this so my uh my taste buds are pretty shot just you know drink octomore drink a bunch of other peated stuff and just all over the place so it was pretty much just let's come on and drink bourbon i'm not doing any tasting i think that'll do it when it comes to your taste buds being shot that'll do it yeah <laughs> we went to a castle before this yeah we were at the the versailles castle in uh versailles kentucky versailles. it's for real castle yeah, I did see those pictures. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was really neat. I've mm -hmm. lived here my whole life and I've never been inside it. So that was cool. Until tonight. Until tonight. And we did have, <laughs> we just had some Elijah Craig there and they were pouring some like local stuff. But we literally showed up. We're like, let's have a pour. Let's go to the roof. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. But it's very reminiscent of the castle. And now here we are with our Austin friends or our friends who we met in Austin. Right. We all live in Austin. It made us miss that. Yeah. I was I was jealous of your guys' uh, your Sunday night accommodations looked much nicer than the uh, La Quinta. So, well, the La Quinta will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, but that hotel was like the week that I booked it, it had only been open for like two weeks, and the price on it was ridiculous on Expedia because no one had stayed there yet. So I was like, okay, I'll take it. There were no reviews. I was like, all right, we'll just roll the dice on this one, and it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It was one of those places where they give you the big fluffy white robes and everything. Yeah. So like, we went for a swim and then afterwards we were like, oh, is this what it feels like to be a rich person? <laughs> <laughs> we were just laying in bed watching TV in our white robes slipping through like, I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> what are the poor people doing today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those out there, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, good times. So. Which which one of the two that we have left do you guys have some of? You, we you have that, some of the Knob Creek. Knob Creek, that's right. Yeah. All right. We so. have none of the four roses because someone loved it and got really excited and drank it all. <laughs> Did you share? A little, but not too much, honestly. Yeah, that's good. I He's really hoarded that one to myself. <laughs> it was well, I don't want to call your judgment, but I really enjoyed it. Or was it? Hmm, yes. <laughs> my beard is not uh, nearly where yours is, nor nor will it probably ever I probably, be. I probably trimmed mine from yes. Austin. Pro I made him. I was like, Chad, it's starting to curl. You, it's got to go. 
Yeah, I've never grown mine out to know that it curls. And it was just like, but it kind of does the <laughs> whoop. <laughs> whiskey whistle. Thanks for that, buddy. I appreciate it. Wait, what? Bill's cocoa puffs? Uh, I don't know what that's about. All right. Anyway, so why don't we get into the Knob Creek? Um, let me just remove my Scotch Test Dummies Batch Four Challenge coin. Yeah. You can find that at ScotchTestDummies.com/store. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Just ScotchTestDummies.com. You'll find it. Yeah. You guys will think um, we're crazy, but people around here that like have never seen those kinds of things. So whenever we pull that out, people are like, "What is that? I love it." Yeah. <laughs> so good job. It does look great. <laughs> Good way. Um, and and uh, Bill, I know you got your coins on the way. You've ordered some. And Chad and Sarah, you guys are both looking into getting them as well. Now, we call them coins, which is what they are. When we got them unintentionally, we found out they work as what we call a whiskey hat and really help you capture the nose on a whiskey. You can put on, they fit on a Glen Cairn and can help you capture the nose. And they also, if you're sitting outside, help keep bugs out of your whiskey, which is really good. Well, so the funny thing, when I first saw you guys using these things, that's exactly what I thought it was for, was just to kind of keep the, the stuff out of your whiskey. And if you're at a bar or whatever, I mean, I know that Bart probably needs to watch for roofies, but <laughs> I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I mean, that's what I thought that they were for originally. And then when you mentioned about the fact that it kind of keeps the nose in there, I tried it and I was like, that actually works. So yeah. um, I thought it was cool. Yeah. So mine are, mine are coming in in about a week or so. Um, if anybody would like to pre-order, uh, I ordered 200 of them for the first batch and uh, I've already pre-ordered, uh, pre-sold a bunch of them. So if there's a particular number that you want, just send me an email, the whiskey dick at gmail.com. Or are, you, are they on? Do you have a website? Are they going to be for sale on or just email? I, I'm a slacker. I have a website. It's totally not finished yet because apparently being a software engineer means like you're the worst person in the world to make your own website. Uh, too much of a perfectionist. So I just started using WordPress and then I was like, all right, now I need like Shopify or something like that. So either way, I've been trying to navigate that whole thing. Like, unless I'm building it myself, I actually am kind of dumb with using these tools that are built to be easy to use. Um, I yeah, have the same problem here. Like, I'm like, I got to build a Shopify page. This is not user friendly. Right. This takes a long yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, like I have an Android and I, I can't use, I have an iPhone for work as well and I cannot use my iPhone. It's too, it, like, I it doesn't speak to me like it's too easy and I don't get it. It's, mm. it's very weird being a technical person and having that be a problem, but. Yeah, we'll we'll get there eventually. I support yeah. you in your yeah. journey. <laughs> Thanks. I feel your pain. <laughs> um, go Habs. Uh, about a week or so, I should have them in in my house, and I'll be able to start shipping them out. So I'm just going to do all the sales through PayPal to start off with, just to make things easier. Or uh, if you want to, I mean, we could do things through check, or we'll figure something out. Just send me an email; we'll figure it out. Um, all right, so let's try this Knob Creek because I sure do love a Knob Creek. How does it smell? Would you say uh, like um, fruity? No, no that's, that's not, not right. it. That's not right. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I know. It's 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 kind of nutty. <laughs> it almost Wait. smells like a really light, like pecan maple syrup or something. I don't know. It does. I still get almost old, real close to the Russell's Reserve, a, a, a kind of a lighter rye and a dusty hay, dusty barn. I do get the dusty, yeah, like the mm -hmm. dusty barn kind of. This has a, a bit heavier of an oaky flavor to it than the mm -hmm. Russell's did. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a little bit stronger with the rye as well. So I see a friend of mine in here, Jonathan. Um, I was just with him about... 45 minutes ago at that Brooklady tasting. So something I didn't mention is that while we're, while we're tasting this stuff, so like within five minutes or so, um, we're in the basement of this liquor store called Julio's Liquors. And, and in the basement, they do all these classes. They've got all these tables set up and everything. And so this guy from Brooklady is given his presentation about five minutes into it, all the power in the building goes out. And like I said, we're in a basement, so it's pitch black. And there's about like 40 people down there Everybody's just kind of sitting there in the dark. And then, of course, everybody puts on their phones. Um, but he was just telling me I should turn off the, the lights. It was the weirdest thing, though. The guy ended up giving his entire presentation in the dark with about five minutes left in his presentation. All the lights came back on. But it was uh, it was interesting. And it made for a good atmosphere to drink the dark arts, actually. It was the dark arts 5.1 that we were having, which was that's good stuff, too. <laughs> actually, I'm sure, Scott, you've probably tried that one, right? 
Uh, 4.1 and 5.1. Yes. Yep. So it was the 5.1 that we were having and they're getting ready to release the 6.1. There's been yep. a couple of questions that have come in on the proof on this. So this is a store pick knob Creek single barrel. Mm. Uh, we got this from Brian. He has been in here off and on the, uh, he did not put the ABV on the label. So I don't know what it is. Should it's not one. the, uh, it's not the knob Creek 120. No, it not. I thought I'll single I, barrel. I'm almost I'm going to throw this out there. I think it's going to come in at like yeah. 123 or 120. Oh my God, Bill. You're not, killing all it. the single barrel selections you don't think so? were the same proof as their regular single barrel, which is 120. Because they don't oh, want they? to redo the labels. Oh. Yeah, because you have to register every time you do a new proof or anything with special. You have to label it with the TT or register it with the TTB. So they just stuck with the 120 on. So if you go pick a Knob Creek on a barrel pick and it's 123, they're going to proof it down to 120 yeah. every time. So I think it's either 120 or it might be 100, but it would be one of those two. It definitely wouldn't be over 120. Mm -hmm. No, you don't think so. Yeah, I mean, you guys kind of made me doubt myself immediately there, but <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested to see what Brian says that it is. You're full of lies. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, oh, he says it's 120. Mm. Um, so I said 123. That's not too far off. Uh, it you, is. It's hot. But you went yeah. over. You have to. You have to. This isn't the price is right, Chad. <laughs> Just give me this one. It's my stream. Isn't it? <laughs> give it to him. All right, fine. <laughs> you are the closest, and so you win. <laughs> I'll give it to you because I like your shirt. Mm. <laughs> oh, Chad. You know, I've, I've got to say it, it's, it breathes well. It's very nice and soft and it's comfortable. It's a nice, it's a tri-blend. We love that. So, so funny thing, I was, um, so on my way out to Austin, I wore my, uh, my what is it, um, coffee black whiskey neat shirt. And yep. this guy kind of noticed it, right? But he didn't say anything to me. And then on the way back, apparently he was on the same flight. We're waiting at the baggage claim and he comes over to me. He's just like, you're a whiskey guy, right? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I saw your shirt on the way out. I like that shirt that you're wearing, though. That's really nice. <laughs> I was, and what was, I was it? like, oh, it was ours. Yeah, it was yours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So sweet. But I, I uh, yeah. And I mean, I told you guys as much, too. I like your logo. I think you guys have one of the better logos uh, among the group as well. Well, so, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it just I, a lot to us. So we have some design friends who would not agree because um, the rules of design are different. But I'm like, I like it. It was mm. original and a and our own idea. Yeah. I'm not changing it. I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> I work with a lot of designers as well in my job, and I mean, right now everybody's just doing minimalistic everything. Yeah, so some of the character goes out of nice. everything. And that's part of the, what I like about it. So anyway, thanks. Yeah. Oh. This Knob Creek is the best of the three so far. It's good, right? I'm gonna try the makers again because for me they're they're pretty close, but I want to see. There's um there's a, I mean it's a little bit richer, almost like it's a little bit more aged than the Russell's Reserve, hmm. and the rye is bringing a little bit more punch than the makers had. I'm getting more uh, sugars, more citrus, more finish off of the Knob Creek. I mean, it. I definitely think it, you know, the higher proof helps it. Um, but I liked, I really liked the Knob Creek, but I think the makers had more like complex and subtle flavors to it. I don't you know. The Russells. No. So here's, oh, well, so the first off, TNT, thank you very much for the super chat. So I ended up trying both of these because I still have some of the makers left, some of the Knob Creek left. But the problem is you can't go from the Knob Creek to the makers and expect to keep, you know, be able to appreciate it as much. Um I think, yeah, I think there's enough spice, especially in this Knob Creek and the Russells. The, and that's why I said start with the Makers, just because it's a weeded. And so you're losing out on a lot of the spiciness that comes with these others. Uh, but I, and, and usually I, I even prefer Makers Mark, but that Knob Creek to me is killing it. Yeah. So, Brian, are you saying the Knob Creek yeah. is 14 years old? Yeah. That's Very an nice. impressive age for wow. the pick. I mean, I've seen them be up to that, but it's rare that people pick a 14, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, cheers TNT's Blues Corner and Brian. Cheers. <laughs> nice. Super cheers, chat. Guys. Always welcome. <laughs> I uh I'm gonna have to go get some bookers. That's that's another rule I have. I, I'm realizing I have a lot of lot of rules on my on my uh, live streams. So when I get super chats, I have to drink Booker. Hey, I think Bill, I'm pretty I sure the other day I saw Booker's one, uh, 18 dash one here. Oh, thanks. I actually, um, so you remember Matt, right? The guy that brought all that whiskey. Huh? Um, so odd thing. So when we were, him and I took a picture of, um, 
basically just uh, us cheersing with the the 45 year old. And so I texted it to him. So then he had my number and then him and I started kind of talking. And after I did that stream the other day from my car, um, he messaged me he's like, hey, I can get my hands on the 01, I think. Um, and uh, he tracked it down. It was like an hour away from him. He drove all the way out there to pick it up. Wow. And to ship it out. So it's like five minutes from my house. Yeah. <laughs> I had another person tell me they're like, yeah, I have a liquor store like across the street and they happen to have the one, two and the three. So if you need it, let me know. But Matt had already gone and gotten it. So I'm I'm uh, indebted to Matt. He's, he's going to ship that out. So um, I'll have to drive up to New Hampshire again, though, because now that I've got the one, I've got to get the two and the three. And uh, they had all three of, or they had both of those up there. So, but thank you, Scott. I appreciate the offer. Uh, Chad and Sarah was discussing if she liked, if she, it was actually the maker's mark she liked better. Did mm -hmm. you guys get that hashed yeah. out? Sorry. I didn't know that those whispers got picked up. He was they like, couldn't, no, they couldn't. I, I could just like, tell you were I talking. I don't mean that one. I mean the one I said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the wrestles, but I think it was for me, the flavors were the least remarkable of the three. I think it was between the makers and the Knob Creek. Um, I just think like the Knob Creek has the edge because of the proof. You know, everything's going to be stronger, more intense. Um, but I like the balance of the makers. So there's that. I think against the the Russells, the age of this Knob Creek was showing. I didn't know it was 14 years old, but it's just that richness was definitely coming through. If that's a fort, if this is a 14 year old store pick, Knob Creek at 120. And you're probably paying seventy or eighty bucks for it. You better go buy a couple more bottles. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. So to those who just gave the super chat, um, so this is still the 2017-03. I basically only ever drink it on the stream because um, I know Chad and Sarah we disagree on this one. This was one of my least favorite of 2017. Um, I love the 2017-02. But anyway, so cheers to those of you giving me super chats. That's a heavy friggin' pour. <laughs> Up. Uh oh, <laughs> man, okay. man down. I'm okay. <laughs> I was going to, uh, I found a 2017 01. So Tommy's, Tommy's batch, right? Tommy's batch. Yeah. The sip a while was the 02, right? Yep. And then front porch batch was 03. Yeah. And then, uh, what was 04 then? That was, um, had an ice cube on the front. It was sip a while. So it was 04. That's the one we like so much. Okay. Oh, so, okay. And cool. our we can original, still be friends. That's good. Well, we yeah. <laughs> Sipple Wild was the one. Yeah. I don't know what number that. I can't remember what number that is off the top of my yeah. head. Yeah. 04 was Sipple Wild. Because it's delicious. Who was um the Blue Knights batch? So I'm it was actually, 04. It was the, I'm surprised I'm remembering these names. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. 01 yeah. of 2018. 2018 is Kathleen's batch. So I'm excited for that one. Oh, that one's unique. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've heard really good things about it. People have been telling me that there's a reason I can't find it is that people go out and buy it. So, which is crazy though, because when we blinded it, I, we both agreed that Sip Wow was like way better. But hmm. I, when I tried Kathleen's batch on its own, not in a blind flight, I was like, this is really good. <laughs> and I tried it next to Sip Wow and I was like, no, 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 no. This is really good. So, uh, she flung dung through another uh, super chat up there. So, thank you. But he was saying that we should do more of these kind of things. And of course, I agree with him. I think um, it's fun. You know, it's it's interesting. It's it's fun to do kind of like a one on one where it's like, you know, I ho host you guys or I host Scott or whatever. But I actually like having a few different channels on. I think it's more fun. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, I only got two bookers, a uh, little book, which I don't, uh, it's the batch one, which I don't have opened yet. I've had a sample of, which I really <laughs> enjoyed. You've avoided? Huh? Once. It's it's really good. It is delicious, but I was just saying don't open it unless you have yeah. another batch of one. Because I mean you can open it obviously whenever you want, but we've talked a lot about this and like how many other times are you gonna get the first edition of the first batch of the thing that Freddie ever made? Yeah. Mm. Ha mm. You're probably not. <laughs> and, I, and I had a sample of it. Actually, I've got uh, my nephew. Um, he's got a bottle of it that's open. He brought over. And I really enjoyed I was like, okay, that's really good. Because I'd kind of heard mixed reviews on it. And I was really it's surprised really by it. I really enjoyed it. And we heard Freddie talk about it last year at Bourbon and Beyond. And he was kind of like, yeah, my dad just kind of like let me have the keys to the kingdom as far as the library of whiskey and bourbon goes. And I kind of just blended my own thing together and I mixed this and that and blah, blah, blah. And he started explaining it. And I was like, I don't know if that sounds very good. And then they gave us a sample of it. I was like, wait a minute. This is actually really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We just picked um, up the O2 batch the other day. We did. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know it was out. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. We just got one of those so 
who knows? Maybe there will be an uncorking on that coming. And then I just have about an ounce or two left of the uh, green. Uh, give me. Oh, so good. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. They had a more professional uh, and yeah. you know, reasonable reaction. It was magical. <laughs> I was looking online and there was one store. I forget where it was at. It was out east. It might have been in New York. Had it for um, $700. And mm. I was like, okay, I'm going to pull the trigger because I want another bottle of it. And they don't ship to Kansas. Oh, man. Dang. That kills me. I've seen it for, like, I saw it for $300, like, less than a year ago. And I really should have. I, I mean, $300 is not something I would normally even spend on a whiskey. But it's, I mean, I know you guys kind of feel differently about that. But it's just, I've got too many other things to go through first. But whereas you guys have done over 500 reviews, you've got most of the easy stuff tackled at this point, I would guess. So, uh, yes and no. You know, there's still probably some, you know. It, it, it's hard. Hmm. So <laughs> Brian, uh, Brian's saying that his 2018 exploded in his car in Austin, which um, Daniel and Rex warned us about. Mm. So I, I uh, that's, that sucks. <laughs> it happened to me once and it's an awful thing when it happens and yeah. it doesn't take that long and too hot of a car. I mean, a yeah. car, it gets hot. So it's a very sad thing when you come back to see a bottle popped because you're like, one, my car smells like booze and how is this ever going to get out? And right. Two, like, oh my God, my bottle. Yeah. I spilled a, uh, so I used to work at Dunkin' Donuts when I was like 16, 17 and early 18. And um, a lot of times I would bring home, you know, uh, coffees or whatever for friends or whatever. And so this one guy, he ordered a, an extra large with extra, extra, extra milk and whatever. And I was driving this car that I loved and I saved up. I, I had a job for, since I was like 12 and I saved up, bought this car. It was awesome. It was a convertible. And I had this thing in the car. It tipped over on a sharp turn, got milk all over the floor of the passenger side. And I could just never get the smell out. Mm -hmm. And I ended up selling the car. Like I, I literally couldn't make it not smell like spoiled milk. Um, even after detailing and everything, it was just, uh, I can't imagine alcohol is much better. It's got to last for a while. Well, that might've killed, that might've killed it actually. If you'd have poured some, uh, yeah, bourbon, drink, actually drink, drink, uh whiskey or bourbon on top of the milk, that might've yeah. been the only thing that would kill it. That's a good point. <laughs> no, every time I drove my car after a bottle exploded in it, I was just like, I I'm going to get pulled over and they're going to make me do a test. Like one of the, <laughs> Sobriety? Yeah, sobriety test. Um, yeah. It's like I can blow into the thing and it'll say nothing, but they're still going to make me do it because it smells like bourbon in my car. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ended up um, going out with some some friends I have that live in Austin after the whole festivities on Sunday afternoon. Like he ended up driving me to the, to the airport. Before that, we went out for ramen, actually. And I was like, just so you know, I've got like, a couple of bottles of, of alcohol in my bag and I've heard that Austin's pretty bad. So you might want to park in the shade. <laughs> um, and of course couldn't, but I was, I was very worried about like that timeline. Cause like you just said, it doesn't necessarily take very long. And we were in the restaurant for like an hour and a half, maybe even two hours. And I feel and, like that's long enough to make it pop. Right. So I, I was pretty happy that the car didn't smell awful or delicious yeah. when we left. Look, we, we found two, uh, not even corked bottles in Austin. We found a, a Weller antique, and uh, a Johnny Drum Black Label, which, which I haven't been able to find in, in Kentucky for two years. So we got both of those. And those are both screw caps. And we mm. still went to Target, bought a mini cooler, bought ice, and put it in there because we were like, I don't know, it could still... We were, we were just like, we don't want to risk it at yeah. this point. Like, it's just worth it. We'll use this cooler at some point. <laughs> yeah, so we came home so, with a little cooler. But, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty Probably. smart, actually. That's a good uh, good idea. Yeah. yeah, just because it's happened to me before, I was like, I really don't want this to happen again. Well, especially, yeah, in the Austin heat, it's like this happens in Kentucky. It's, oh my God, it's gonna happen, gonna happen in, Austin, in Austin. But I'm, I'm and we're driving didn't... a rental car, so we really can't <laughs> want to pay for to get the bourbon smell out. Right. Yeah. Exactly. When I came back from when I came back from Austin, when I landed, uh, it was like eleven thirty at night or so, and um, didn't get my Uber until almost. It was after midnight, actually. So when when I tried to get an Uber right after my plane landed, it was going to be one hundred and twenty six dollars to get home, something like that. Oh. But it said it was peak time. I'm just like, oh my god, not happening. So I, I was like, I'd rather sit in the airport for an hour and see if it improves. And I did exactly that. It ended up being sixty dollars to get home, which was it was like fifty eight to get out. So it was right right where it should have been. Yeah. Um, but long story short, it was like seventy four degrees. 
And coming from that 105 or whatever the hell it was that day to 74 and like 100% humidity, I, I actually was missing the Austin heat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's the only difference is the humidity. It's like, I don't know which is worse. People are like, it's a dry heat. But I'm like, I'm not sure. It's like 100% humidity. It was so I hot know. in Austin. I couldn't wear my hat. I had to take my hat off. It was so hot. <laughs> Yeah, I was miserable. My I was cooler was, well, with my hat off. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny, Scott. The only footage that I really had that stayed in focus um, was when I was sitting on that tree stump and I was like doing just a little like monologue and you ran in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got your your face about three quarters of an inch away from the camera in perfect focus. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a thing I want to see very often. <laughs> hey, it's better than Bart's face. That's that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll cheers to that with your yeah, cheers. <laughs> Bart's face. Look at this glass. Available at Scotch Test Dummies. I was oh, at the Scotch Test Dummies <laughs> glass. Yeah. Order yeah. now and you'll also get. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I'm going to complete the set. Hold on. <laughs> if you order now, you'll get this actual one that. You Chad drank out of it. Yeah. We won't even wash it. You can clone your own Chad. <laughs> no one wants so, it. No. Order now and you also get the Scotch Test Dummies shot glass. <laughs> oh, yeah, those are rare too. Yeah. So this is the point where we don't have the same thing to drink as you all have. Ready. That's true. Well, do we maybe we don't even drink it? Yeah. I mean, I'm no, totally fine. But I think that you should because it's so good. Drink it. Well, so here well, do you guys do you so guys have a uh, four roses exactly yeah you must have a four roses of some sort back there sure sure yeah but fine so okay it's not the same well i guess i messed up by pouring myself some bookers yeah you better mm. drink that or here you just use mine and i'll stay with this i'm good Will you be joining us? Oh, so I see Eric Wait is in the chat. Hey, Eric. Actually, you know what? While they're getting a bottle, let's take a minute to actually acknowledge the chat. <laughs> so we got Whiskey Throttle, Daniel. Nice to see you. Whiskey Whistle, Eric, like I said. Hey, Yoshi, what's going on? Nice to see you here. Um, actually, I, I know you've shown up a couple times in my streams, but it's it's a rarity, so it's nice to have you here. Um, Yoshi is Yoji, who we met down there in Austin. Oh, um, yeah. Awesome. We played Cards Against Humanity. Yep. Yes. Yep. And that's, uh, that's Whiskey Yoshi, but that's Yoji. Yeah, it was down there. Nice. And Santa Cruz, and of course. Um, I'll spare everybody's ears by not doing my normal thing that I do when I see Santa or Tom R. Tom um, R. Yeah. I never see Tom R in my streams anymore. I feel like maybe my time time is not when he can come or something. But uh I would point out because a couple of people have commented about the power glove, but I have the fart gun. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a original 1985 Nintendo Zapper. Yes. Did you have a, was it Duck Hunter with that? Duck yeah. Hunt, yeah. <laughs> Hogan's Alley. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that if you plug in the second controller, you can control the ducks. <gasps> oh. What? <laughs> Excuse me a second. I know. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Well, now we have to stay up the rest of the night playing Duck Hunter. Thanks. It'll only work on a CRT TV because of the way that the uh, the little thing works. So, yeah. So nerd. <laughs> you guys try that. We've got some uh, Four Roses LE Small Batch 2017. I gotta tell you, I love the Small Never Batch. Never seen that. That, that was my uh, my favorite whiskey of. 2017, yeah, which I get is kind of like a little silly, but you just had the small batch. You just had the regular. Right, right, right. Yeah, I know. I didn't have what they have. Yeah. He's got the lim the 2017 limited edition one. The small batch is really good, though. I like it as like a daily it's, kind of. I like it for dessert. Well, even I'll tell you the Four Roses single barrel. I mean, just not, not the store picks with the different recipes, but the standard Four Roses single barrel. Well, it's upstairs, but I mean, that's a good one too. I find myself going to it a lot. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the I only thing really... I really don't like is the yellow label, which isn't even yellow anymore. So <laughs> that yellow label, man, I, except for maybe just like an intro to bourbon. Um, it really doesn't, doesn't belong. No, it really doesn't. It's not as like the, the small batch is only a few dollars more, like literally less than $5 more, I think. And it's, 
so much better. Yeah, agree. All right, so uh, Scott, you ready to pour this four roses out? Yep, I've got it. And uh, in fact, I was just going to point out again for those watching, this is the OESQ recipe. Uh, this was a store pick from Indiana. And I've had the OESV recipe, which I found delicious. So we're we're literally ending on a high note here with 122.2. So yeah, maybe that's why I liked it so much. <laughs> I literally we're not drinking that because if you're just now joining, I broke into the samples before I knew that we were going to do this episode, and I may mm. have finished that bottle mostly on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I see why. Oh my! It's so good, and I think it's got such like a that one too. I think has like a chocolatey flavor and. It's just like silky and nice, but the proof's Flor right there. A lot more, so. Yeah, a lot more floral notes with it. Mm -hmm. Rich. So, uh, Scott, I believe it's your turn. Uh, is there anything you, in particular you'd like to toast? Uh, again, our friends from Austin. Not only us, but like Yoji is in here. Zach Andrews is in here. Brian. How about that? All of the people that uh, came out to see us and Rex and Daniel in Austin. And Rex Perfect. and Daniel. I like it. All right. Cheers. 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 Mm. Oh, wow. Holy crap. That's only, a, that's 122. Right. That tastes like water. Like, <laughs> you know, like burn wise. It's yeah. That's incredible. Even looking at the legs on the, on the glass here, like it's, I can't believe that's 122 proof. A lot of cinnamon. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Oak. Woo. I, I got to say, yeah, for me, just immediately, that's that's the winner. Like that one, that one's really, really good. Wow. Uh, Knob Creek's pretty good, though, too. The Knob Creek is I very good. Go I mean, back and I, forth. They're, that's the two standouts. The the Knob Creek is more complex, for sure, and like a like way more interesting flavor. But I just, like, I could drink this all the time. No, the edge, remember, might go, the edge might go to that Four Roses. Yeah. I could see why Sarah drank the whole thing without giving you much more. Yeah. So. I was like, Chad, do you want a I sip? Just some. kidding. It's mine. <laughs> no, I think I'm pretty sure I'm the one who opened it, poured my little bit and gave it to you. And then by the time I realized just how good it was, <laughs> I was like, it's gone. I you, want it. You oh. had the rest of the sample. Yep. <laughs> yep. Seems right. What would you pair with peppercorn bacon? Hmm. Ooh. Um, you got to go with a peated scotch. You got to go with a peated scotch for that. Mm. Booker's rye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Brian. I appreciate that. I'm trying to think of one that I've had recently that that had like a pepper peppercorn kind of flavor. It definitely uh, comes up from time to time. Chad and Sarah, what's been your favorite of the the four roses recipes? the single barrel recipes that you've had. What did you guys, we actually did like a class in this and I, I like the cues and the, uh, I think it was like cues in the case. Cues in the case. Yeah. Yeah. We're usually what we lean towards. OESQ, OESK. Now, do you guys know offhand the, the, what that recipe means? I mean, I know there's different, Oh geez. Yes. Um, but not right mash now. bills. One of them depends like the O, OE is like if it's rye, how much rye there is. There's two yeah. different ones I know. Corn to rye. Letter that it's it's always the second and the fourth that change. The O um, and the S always stay. Like one of them means that it's straight whiskey. Um, but yeah, it's the it's. I, I think we typically like the 35% rye mm -hmm. recipes, but I want to say one of those that we just said is is the other one. Well, they have a 20% and a 35%. And I feel like, oh, oh. one moment, please, while Chad disappears again. <laughs> Zoe, you can be the star. No, I know. I've got, I've got, um, we'd had samples sent to us. I haven't broke into them, maybe one or two of them, of all the different recipes. Um, I know I've had the OESV, though, which I really liked. This is really good as well. So the, uh, if it's an E, it's a 75 or sorry it's a um a 20 percent rye and if it's a b it's a 35 percent rye so like the the uh um the q oesq 
it would be a floral essence, and the K would be a slight spice. Yeah, that's what I got. I at, on that one, on this one right here, I said, boy, there's a lot of. It's more floral than the Knob Creek is for sure. Yeah, yeah I would definitely say like I generally like the 35% rise more, and we tend to pick a Q or a K. Huh. Hmm. So, the spice or the the floral essence. Yeah, yeah and then uh, Joe Green is pointing out that the last letter is the E strain. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. Mm. What do they have? Seven, I think, ten. seven different ten. yeast strains? Yeah. Well, I don't or ten, know. Ten, ten yeah. recipes, yeah. Ten, ten recipes. Right. Two, two, five different yeast strains and two different... Yeah, two yeast strains. And, two yeah. yeast strains and five different somethings, yeah. I had that written down earlier because I, I knew I would forget it. Five, five, <laughs> sorry, five proprietary... Two mash bills, five yeast strains. That's what it so was. I, yeah, I, I thought it was right with the five yeast that? strains, but yeah, it wow. seemed like a lot too when I saw the math things on the last bourbon. That's, no, that's never good. <laughs> no, after know, like, like several all of these have been over hundred really proof bourbons, it's not fair. Yeah, it's all fair. over, well over a hundred. Plus, I I don't know if you guys saw how much of that Booker's I poured, but I pretty much shot it. So it's one twenty five point nine. Yeah, good stuff. So, well, on on my end too, I'd just like to point out that I don't have it. There wasn't. I didn't save any for Bart. <laughs> there, was none, there was none left. That's that's video proof. You yeah. can fix that in post, huh? So <laughs> <laughs> I drained the uh, the makers, and I'm. I guess yeah. I'm going to finish. Actually, I, I guess I did finish that one. Here hmm. we go. Here's ours. <laughs> Well, well I didn't pour quite so much of the um, the Four Roses or the Russell Reserve or the Knob Creek, just because uh, after that Maker's Mark, I realized I was going to want to keep something to to actually enjoy later, um, yeah. more so than just being on a live stream. And well, Chad and Sarah, you're pouring for two, also. That's mm. true, and again, I had also broken into all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, there was like enough for both of us to have a taste. It still <laughs> looked impressive. It did look impressive, and it was enough. <laughs> So, Scott, I'm going to throw a teaser your way for a minute because I don't want to spoil any sort of surprises, but I'm curious what happened to certain footage that may have happened towards the end of the Whiskey Vault uh, interaction. Is that going to come out at some point? Oh, uh, yes. Matter of fact, we have that bottle to review. We actually shot or we shot. We shot. OK, we got back. We shot two reviews. We did Eleanor and that mm -hmm. bottle. OK. And I left Bart. It was late at night. I got home and started to edit Eleanor. And there was no audio. Oh, oh don't you guys hate that? that? Man. So we had to actually meet again to get Ellen. We reshot Eleanor and we got it. Posted. We didn't. Re and so we didn't redo that. And I know you're talking about Johnny Walker, red label. Oh, we need to read the secret. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, it'll be coming out. Okay. I was telling somebody uh, that Jonathan guy that, that I was talking about with the lights out thing earlier today, I was telling him about that and he was, he was laughing pretty hard about that. Uh, just, it was such a funny moment. <laughs> well, yeah. For those of you in the, in the chat, wait until you see this is, it's going to be good. Um, <laughs> did we lose, lose Chad and Chad and Sarah? Oh, he's nope, fiddling. still there. Chad had to go again. Probably. Uh, Chad's, Chad's fiddling. Chad's Stop. changing the battery. Oh, okay. That seems like the one, like it's surprising with the gear that you have that there's no way to. There Good. is. Um, you can purchase like a battery backup pack kind of a thing. Well, no, it's just where you plug it into AC, and I just haven't bought it yet. It's a fancier <laughs> thing where when yeah. the battery dies, it's, it's something. Uh, Ninety-five percent of the time, it's not a problem, but hmm. you yeah. know, I just <laughs> yeah, bought gonna, like four extra batteries because I, I just got tired of having to keep them. You know, I had two, and I was switching between them. I had more than one occasion where it was like I'm ready to film, and one of both of them are dead to the point where I can't film. Yeah, and you know, that's not good. Oh, I've no. got five batteries, but, you know, you have it on for an hour and it drains it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah. So what? So we kind of talked about this a little bit, but just for kind of a recap. So, so Sarah, what was your what was your favorite of the, the four? I mean, there wasn't a bad one in the bunch, but I have to say that the Four Roses was my favorite just because I specifically remember loving that one so much. Mm hmm. I think I might say that my second favorite was a tie between the Knob Creek and the Maker's Mark. A tie. But the Four okay. Roses was definitely my favorite. All right, so here's here's the pressure. P pick a second and pick a third. No, don't do that to me. <laughs> I'm doing it to you. I'm doing it. But go. I can't remember. Um, do it. Three, two, okay, one, the go. Makers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> because I liked the way it had more flavors that shone through 
with the higher proof and the knob creek was like a bit higher proof but mm -hmm. it wasn't as complex with the flavors it was powerful but not complex sarah i hope you're never in a terrorist organization because if you get arrested you're just spilling all the beans i'm gonna cry <laughs> they're gonna be like, like tell me all your secrets i'm gonna be like no get... and they're gonna be like do it i'll be like okay I didn't you're like uh you're like the flavor. bartender in deadpool 2 you know when uh when they got him and he's like okay look, i'm not good at pressure okay look i'll tell you everything you want to know that's pretty much me yeah <laughs> don't tell me any secrets because i'll crack <laughs> all right so chad you're up I would say, uh, same as Sarah, it's the Four Roses is my definite first place. But my second place would be the Knob Creek. Mm -hmm. uh, third place would be the Makers. And the Russells is always great, but I feel like I've had some better picks of, of Russells. I completely agree. Like We have a Lexington Bourbon Society pick of Russells that I adore. Yeah. And it's almost empty because I just keep going back to it without chad's permission uh because it's his bottle um but yeah i've i think i've had russell's picks that stood out more to me i didn't dislike this not one. that there it was just, bad at there all there just wasn't anything jumping out right so yeah that's how we felt cool um quick aside to say hey to whiskey in the six what's going on rob um so scott you're up i'm gonna mute myself hmm <laughs> no, uh, definitely. Uh, I think the winner is the four roses. I went back, boy, that second one is tough to call the, uh, and not that it's a bad pick. The, the overall number four pick for the palette is the Russell's reserve of these. Number one is the four roses. Number two is the knob Creek or the makers. Let's see real quick. They're both very good. I think I'm going to go Maker's Mark number two and then mm -hmm. Knob Creek and Russell's Reserve coming in number four on these. All very good, though. All delicious. Excellent. So, so you agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I'm I'm gonna agree with all three of you. Go with the four roses for number one. I think that's a. Um, <laughs> I like that. I just got a super chat because Scott is so freaking handsome. That's, oh, um, you misspelled. Hey, that's from that's from the beard. <laughs> yeah, do you get a kickback from that, Scott? Is that how that works? That's from the beard. I like the the best I know looking the reviewer in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go four roses is my number one. I picked Knob Creek over Makers, but I also agree that that is a, a total toss-up. I think it would it would depend on what mood I was in. The Makers would be my first dram, but the the Knob Creek I think just kind of it won out. You know, it's it's more complex. It's a little bit more fun to drink. Um, all right, so then the Makers, and then obviously the Russells. So um, we're all pretty in line, actually. Yeah, two and two. <laughs> Scott. Right? We're tied. So who's right and Sarah and Scott versus versus Bill, Bill and, and Chad. You. Yeah. Well. So I guess it depends on whose palate you more align with. <laughs> you know, we did a uh, we did a 16 bottle blind bourbon shootout and we had all kinds of stuff. I mean, we had everything in there. And when we got done and I found out which one I had I had advanced through all 16 bottles, it was Maker's Mark. Huh. Just, the, just the regular Maker's Mark release. That's interesting. Bart, Bart's favorite of the sixteen was Elijah Craig Small Batch, mm -hmm. which is and and I've got both sitting here. I mean, it's just it was so amazing. We had Van Winkle Twelve Year Lot B. We had Elmer T Lee. We had mm -hmm. Knob Creek. We had uh, sixteen bottles, standard yeah. bourbons. Eagle Rare was in there. And blind, it just blew me away that Maker's Mark was what I had picked out. But wow, well, it cool. just goes to show you the you know people's different palettes. Because when when we did our bracket, we were doing them in brackets of four, and Maker's it, these were all the under twenty five. And at the time, I think Maker's was under twenty five in our area, um, and it came in last. <laughs> yeah, of that bracket of, of the bracket, bracket of four. So you know, it just goes to show you different 
different yeah, folks. I think, yeah, stuff. I think it comes down, yeah, what's it up against, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah. sure. I mean, and we review things on here, but there's a reason that everyone makes their product because someone's buying it, right? Someone's interested in buying it. So we may not be those people, but you may be those people. I don't exactly. know. Yeah. I got to yeah. say, I mean, we, we literally have channels on YouTube where we're reviewing whiskey. I don't think that we're the norm. So, no, <laughs> we're those weirdos. <laughs> right. Um, so real quick, I just want to say to, to H. Hemphill. So you asked a very specific question about 2017-01. Um, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to try it, and I want you to, to comment back on this video and tell me what you think about it, because I don't want to give you my opinion of it until you've had it. Um, but I'm very interested to know what you think. So, all right. Um, so... Do you guys, uh, why don't we kind of do a little sign off here? So Chad and Sarah, um, I've been going to you guys first all night. So Scott, <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, anything you've got kind of upcoming that you're excited about, anything you want to talk about? Okay. Well, so I'm, I'm one half of the Scotch Chess Dummies. I'm Scott, Scott, I'm Scott <laughs> missing, oh, missing his <laughs> All these, uh, all these high uh, ABV whiskeys are kicking in. <laughs> but um, coming up, so nothing too much. Our fifth year anniversary is coming up here in Wichita. We're having a gathering. There's more details on our webpage, scotchtestdummies.com. You can check those out. And um, other than that, that's about it. Cool. Chad and Sarah? Well, we're Chara. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> well, they're scart. They're scart. So we can be Chara. We prefer Better Chara. than sad. Better than sad, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that moniker. That's good. Sad. We've got a couple of local meetups coming up. Uh, the Kentucky Bourbon Festival is this coming weekend. We're doing a thing on Saturday. Um, the weekend after that is Bourbon and Beyond. We'll be there. And then two weekends after that, We'll be doing a Keeneland meetup, which is a local horse racing slash drinking event. Uh, that's also my birthday. So we'll be doing that here as well. So if you're in the Lexington area in the next couple of weeks, just let us know. And uh, we'll direct you to the appropriate event. Yeah. Um, video wise, we have started our barrel proof flight fight, which is Ooh, very uh, nice. Will be five episodes. We have our first episode out now. Um, and we will have what it's like to go on a barrel pick coming mm -hmm. out soon in the month of september for bourbon heritage month so if you've ever want to know what it's like to go on a barrel pick that'll be okay so i got a question on the barrel proof flight yeah yes how did you guys film that <laughs> well very we're still slowly. working on it and very carefully we took <laughs> yeah we've only so small pours and and long breaks yeah so it's 16 it's 16 bourbons so four brackets of four and then each, our finals and then the finals will be the fifth episode and so Normally we do like our flight and we do cracker time and then we go back at it. Yeah. This time it was like, do our flight, do cracker time. Also take a 20 to 30 minute break, have our notes come back to it because yeah, it is a, Oh, look at you. You got, you got one of those in there. I'm sure. Uh, I knew not one. that one, but we do have an Elijah Craig barrel proof. Yeah. I'm more, uh, I think we put the recent release, the B five one seven in there since it won. You know, uh, the high accolades. Of course, the C also won, but uh, I think we put the B five one seven in there. But uh, but yeah, no, it's it's gonna be good. Let you know, the first one of those we had was the old bottling. It was a sixty nine point seven percent, which I thought was just phenomenal. Yeah, and I have one sealed bottle of that yet. That's nice. Good stuff. Someone yes. asked when my birthday was. It's October 6th. October 6th. In case 6th. you were wondering. So if you October want to be <laughs> Sarah's birthday. You can be at my birthday party because it's on the same day as our Keeneland meetup. Just go to our Keeneland meetup from 12 no. to 10, 10, 10 to, to 4. Yep. Something like that. In Keeneland in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, and we're we're doing our uh, not an infinity bottle. It's more. We're of making a our own blend. Blend, oh, and cool. we're bringing lots of bourbon and snacks. Yeah. So, but that's very local. So, anyways, I feel like we've taken enough time of what we've been doing. So, back <laughs> what, to you, Bill. What are you doing, Bill? Back to you, Bill. <laughs> no problem at all. Hey, you know what? This is what it's all about. We're all having fun here. So, I'm uh, I'm putting out. Um, oh my gosh, what the hell is it called? Uh, Elmer T. Lee. Jeez, I, I just read somebody put um, E.H. Taylor and it totally just messed with my head. So Elmer T. Lee is coming out this Friday. 
I've got a couple of, uh, I've actually got Metallica sending me the bottle of Blackened. I'm going to probably be getting that in the next couple of days. And Metallica doing... sending it to you? Metallica, yes. Lars like, and and the other guys that I can't remember their names right now. Lars is the one that had the whole um, <clears throat> Napster yeah. thing. So his, my, his name just sticks in my head. Anyway, so I'm going to be doing that pretty soon. Probably, possibly even next Wednesday. Um, but I'm actually like just extremely excited about that. Sorry, I just heard my two-year-old screaming upstairs, so I think I need to go. Um, <laughs> either way, so Elmer T. Lee this Friday, and um, Coin's coming out soon, so look for some of that information coming across on my channel pretty soon. So um, thank you, Scott and Chad and Sarah, all for joining me here tonight, and thank you, everybody, for coming out. This has actually been really, really fun, and of course, thank you, Brian and Tammy, for sending us samples or giving us samples so that we could have this fun night together. Yep, and thank you for uh, having me on, Bill. Yep, cheers yeah. to all of you Thanks for so much having us and cheers. watching. Yep, cheers to everybody. Good cheers. night. Cheers. Slauncha. <laughs>